Hi, welcome to Blind Owl Bushcraft and Survival. Please enjoy our channel. If you would, we'd appreciate it if you join our Patreon page. It's been a long, long road. Thank you. Yeah, look at that. It weighs 500, 500 grams. I cut my, cut my hand good making it. So it's got my blood in it. Makes it my knife. Yeah, 500 grams. Now that's that's just a little over a pound, I think. I'm not. Hi, welcome to Blind Owl Bushcraft and Survival. My name's Dan. I'm here in the Philippines. I'm down in the shop, sitting in front of a fan. It's about 120 degrees outside. It feels like. Supposed to be the hottest summer in the history of the Philippines. Our summer's from March till July. No rain, hot winds. Pretty wicked. Oh, I thought I'd check out these two new knives I got. This is one that I got that has the rubber handle on it pretty crude. I'm going to tap something on this one. Let's see, this one. see how it's got a little bit of a ring to it? That's supposed to be the sign of, of molly steel, spring steel. No, this one's about the same. I tapped this with something else today and it seemed like it was a dud. This one's got a nice ring to it. This one's a little duller sound, I guess. This is the one I really like, though. It's got the caribou horn handle on it that I think I can polish up nice. Uh, normally, I just, uh, when I'm going to make a hunting knife or something like that, or a bushcraft knife, I will trace the blade shape on a piece of cardboard and then make several attempts at what I'm looking for as far as shapes go. I kind of know what I want here. Um, let's see, I was actually thinking about a 9 inch blade or a 10 inch blade. 10 inches way out here. Nine's right here. This is the one that I made before. My monster knife. This one got on it. This one's down to seven and a half inch blade. I cut it down because it was so heavy. It's still too heavy to me. But I thought a 9 inch blade or a 10 inch blade would be perfect. I'm thinking about making kind of a moonshiner copy. If I put a dot here at 10. It's 10 inches. And the blade design I'm looking for, I'm looking for something real simple. I just want a drop point, basically. Now you can drop, you can drop the point to the center. Let's see. It's like Actually, it's two and a quarter right here. Go for three eighths on each side. Okay. 
that right there is about center. You probably can't see that. There's a little smudge on the blade right here. Now, if you rounded your blade up and the blade down from the top to the center, that's a Kephart design. And they're usually made on knives out of quite a bit thinner steel. This one has a drop point of about let's see. has a much shorter drop point on it. I was thinking about halfway between halfway, so quarter. This is a goofy ruler here. Normally when you have all your marks on here, like half would be a little longer. This doesn't have a mark on it like that. One, two, three, four. So I think the drop point should go to about here, I guess. And that would just be a nice little line, something like that. And a real nice curved belly. Might need just a little more of a slope to it, but something in that range it needs to be round something like that and that would be a 10 inch blade there I don't know what that looks like to you guys but I was thinking about making the blade narrower, but I don't think so because it's pretty thin. And the advantage to that is it already has an edge on it. Real rough back here. Now this one is quite a bit narrower down here at the, the hilt. About, about 9 or 10. I don't really care for the buoy, the buoy style blades or much at all. They're okay, but I don't, I'm not a big fan of them. Might just give this one to my wife for chopping stuff. Right. And I got a grinder. Um, need to get a cutting blade for it. I think. I think. I think that's gonna be the plan. I think what I'll need is a, let me see if I can find something that has a good circle on it. There's a 
good edge on it, good uh, roundness. I'm pretty close here with what I got. Alcohol here. Everything I have is kind of uh, some stone out of the way. So if I put this CD case here on that mark over here. To the edge to give me a nice clean round curve. There we go, it's a nice looking belly there. Too tight of a circle for that one. That one I just have to do by eye, the, the drop point, I think. That's all right, though. Now, the big secret is cut it straight. And I have a heck of a time with the grinder. Being accurate. Maybe if I cut it real slow, I can do it. That's a good looking, I think that's a good looking belly right there. I don't know what you think. You need a pretty good belly. That's why I like the regular drop point. I like the nice long curve. I don't want it to be too flat of a curve because it, it, to me a knife should be able to be a skin or two at the same time. You need a pretty good curve to be a skin and knife. But this will be a supreme bushcraft knife once it gets done, I think. We'll see how it turns out. Be great for batoning. Uh, it should be razor sharp so that when you, you carve, you carve down here in the bottom two inches of the blade. Got enough of a little, little lip here to keep your hand from sliding off of it. That'll be handy. Yeah, let me let me get back. I'm gonna go see if I can uh, find a clamp and uh, cutting wheel and grind her up. All right, I'm back. Took me about an hour to cut the blade, and then I took it over to the bench grinder. And I rounded off the, the belly and the, the drop point, which turned out real nice. I was real close with my grinder today. Then I used the bench grinder, which I've never used before, to grind the edge, the bevel, which worked out pretty good. Then I went back to the right angle grinder with a flap sanding paper disc. Uh, 60 grit paper that's all worn down and I use that to blend the edge all in real nice and and ground down both sides until I got a burr on it and I sanded the, the rest of the the side of the knife so it's all even now now I've got a 
buffalo horn handle. Now my options here are I can leave it the way it is or I can sand it down a little bit and polish it up which is going to make it real slippery. Might make it quite a bit smaller by the time I get it smooth enough. I don't know. Um, I think I'll wait on that for a little while. But it seems just about right. Let's see what it weighs. Yeah, look at that. It weighs 500, 500 grams. I cut my, cut my hand good making it. So it's got my blood in it. Makes it my knife. Yeah, 500 grams. Now that's that's just a little over a pound, I think, if I'm not mistaken. I don't know what my converter. I think I thought it was like 460 grams or something like that. 465 grams is a pound. It's just in my head. I don't know. Don't hold me to it. This is a little uneven here with the the horn handle. I might just run the grinder down that to make it smooth, and and on this side to make it even. A little messed up here the steel's a little thinner right here but again that's not gonna make any difference to me this is a this is a work knife guys this is my 10 inch double check nine and seven eighths inch utility knife I love the weight it's just perfect this will be heavy enough and has enough of a blade that I can get a good swing on stuff that it will chop wood split small wood be great for batoning um, I can put my thumb on the top here I might I might put some little lines across here like jimping or something don't need it just for looks with my Dremel. I don't know about that. I never tried that. Right now, from here to the tip, it's hair shaving sharp, which is very important. As you can see, it kicked out of the grinder, out of the buffer, smashed into my hand, just slipped me right open, right to the bone. But that's no problem because it's a razor cut. That'll heal right up. This was my first monster knife. It was a nine inch blade when I started it, but it was just too heavy. What's it weigh now? It weighs 650 grams, which is just, it just seems a little too heavy. It's a quarter inch thick here and, and thicker than that at the tip. This is from a cleaver, but making this knife was good because it just gets more experience. There's just something else to play with. I'll give that knife away. If someone comes and visits me, bushcraft guy, I'll give you my monster knife just for the fun of it. You can take it home as a souvenir from the Philippines. A little bit of buffing compound in the grain of the knife here where I sanded it down, which is fine. That'll come right out. I don't know what you guys think. I, I think it's perfect. Look at that, look at that tip. Got a nice a nice drop point. Has a three-quarter inch drop point. Then a nice round belly. Be perfect for skinning. The tip. The tip is needle sharp, which is perfect. In case I need to stance stab somebody or something. Be ideal. This is my new bushcraft knife, guys. Now the only secret will be, what's the steel like? And does it have any tempering in it? If not, I'll have to fix the edge up and find a way to temper the edge. I think, my, I think what I'll do, I, I know a guy, a fabricator in town that has a uh, brazing uh, I don't know what do you call it the the, 
the thing for fire for brazing. We call it a nozzle or something maybe. Like ox, ox, oxyacetylene. Here they use propane, I think. But maybe if I, maybe if I heat it up, the edge about a half inch back, red hot, glowing red, and then quenched it, that would make the edge hard, even brittle in fact, but hard. And the rest of the blades medium, medium hard. That might not be too bad. And then I could actually go back over the, the blade after it's been quenched, go back over it lightly with the heat and, uh, you know, get it clean so it'll be a color, it'll be dark, get it cleaned and then put the heat on it until it turns kind of a straw colored. That'd be about 700 degrees, six or 700 degrees. And that would be a, that would be a tempering. But again, I don't know what kind of steel it is, so. It's magnetic. Here's a snake egg. It's definitely, definitely magnetic. So it's not pure stainless steel. I don't know if you guys know, all your stainless steel knives you got aren't really stainless steel. They're a mix of stainless steel and some other things. True stainless steel. Food, call it this way, food grade stainless steel is not magnetic. But every knife or every gun I had, the stainless steel is magnetic, so so it's not pure stainless steel. And the food grade stainless steel does not rust, ever, no matter what. I worked at a plant where we used to go to packing houses and set them up to, to retrieve all their blood. And uh, we used the food grade stainless steel. I made a couple knives out of it, and uh, it's too soft. Now I can see on my edge here, it's not perfect. A couple little zigs and zags, a little dip down here. But does that matter? Not right now, it doesn't. Because I shaved with it here, 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 on the belly and the tip. And all, all those places were shaved hair right off my leg like it wasn't even there. And I've been holding it now for about an hour, on and off. I like it. I really like the, the weight of it. This was going to be kind of a moonshiner clone, but this is something this is something more original than that, so it's not a moonshiner clone. But it's in the same ballpark, 10-inch blade, razor sharp. I've got caribou, caribou horn uh, handles, scales. Full tang, 90 degree spine, bushcraft survival perfection, guys. And monetarily, so far, I have $9 in it plus a little time. So, how can you beat that, guys? You can't. Now, if I had a way of shipping knives out of the Philippines, for some reason you're not allowed to ship a knife out of the Philippines, um, i got to look into that more. There's got to be a way to ship them out. I might have to start a business or something to be allowed to. I'm not sure how it's going to work. But I'd like to start making knives like this. And, you know, I would think a knife like this with a real fancy, not fancy, but a nice PVC sheath, with a nice dangler loop on it, just what I would use would be uh, the average man's uh, favorite tool, and we can make them any. We could make them any length you want, any style you want. If you can imagine it, I think we could make it. Just take a little imagination. So that's all I got for now, guys. Take care. Hashtag 22 day no more. Go out and have some fun. Watch your six really close. Be careful what's going on in the cities right now. I saw a bunch of stuff on the news about New York and uh, uh, what's going on in some of the colleges and stuff and around them. Riots and mob rule and uh, 
Columbia University sounded pretty bad. Uh, blocking students from going to classes just because they were Jewish. Uh, that's not right. So be extra careful where you're where you're going, guys. Yeah, I think I, I think I did good this time. See you later. Thanks for watching. Take care.